I don't know why this does this on this time of the night. Well, you're very welcome to the evening. And uh, we're doing something different tonight. Normally we talk to the community associations, but this evening we're going to talk to Una Walsh from South Armagh. And Una has three lovely videos to talk about. And we're going to, we're actually going to chat about the videos, what they mean. And uh, I, a lot of people probably don't understand or don't know the historical uh, significance of uh, this area that we live in. And uh, I'm going to go to, hello Una, can you hear me? I can, Damien, how are you? How are you doing? I'm not so bad. Una, sorry, there's a little bit of little bit of a lag from my end here, but we, we, we'll continue anyway. Una, it's great to have you here. I'm delighted to be able to chat to you. And uh, I know you have three videos here to talk to me. You. you have a couple of videos. Uh, there's two videos, the Mass Rock, the Market Stone, but the first one is all about Craigan. Now, the first question I would say, why did you pick these three particular videos? Well, uh, Craigan, I suppose, picks itself because there is nowhere in the South Arm area that would deserve a video more than Craigan. Uh, Craigan, first of all, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, Craigan is on the road into Cross, just before you go into Cross McGlen, about a mile outside Cross McGlen. Craigan dates itself back to the 14, 1480s uh, when the chieftains, the O'Neills of Tyrone, came and set up uh, Craigan. And from 1480 to present day, all of the social fabric of the people of that area, uh, be it from the clergy to the Gaelic chieftains, to the High Sheriff of County Armagh, to the outlaw Seamus Moore, to the last of the Gaelic poets, uh, Art McCree, Pelham McElindon, Seamus Moore, McMurphy, all buried in Craigan graveyard. So Craigan, uh, Craigan is really and should be a cultural tourism hotspot. Uh, for the Newry Morn and Down District Council area. There is nowhere, uh, anywhere like it. Uh, so we're going to look at the first video. And videos are important because... Una... We're going to watch the video first. In the rich historical and cultural landscape of South Armagh, yeah, so... is our jewel. The following is a selection of verse and prose on Craigan. Urkill on Craigan. On the clay of Craigan churchyard, I slept all night in woe. With the rise of morn, a maiden came and kissed me, bending low. Her cheek had the blush of beauty, her tresses the golden sheen. T'was the world's delight to gaze upon the face of the fairy queen. One pledge I ask you only, one promise, O queen divine. And then I shall follow, still follow each step of thine. If I should die in some far off land, in our wanderings east and west, in the fragrant clay of Craigan, let my weary heart of rest. Craigan pulls the centuries together and lets you see them in the nudity of their correlation. It is local history laid bare before you. It gives food for thought, and at no time of the day do whispers of the past become more vibrant than at the twilight hour. Craigan of the Princess, Craigan of the Irish Chieftains, Craigan of the Cromwellian Landlords, Craigan of the Gael, Craigan of the Gaul, Craigan of the Poets, Craigan of the Outlaw, Craigan of the Priest Hunter, Craigan of 98, Craigan of the Famine, Craigan of the Land League, Craigan of the Clergy, Church of Ireland, Presbyterian and Roman Catholic, Craigan of the countless thousands of ordinary people. Sometimes at twilight here I stray, when summer sunset closes day. Across the meadow comes the strain, McCooey's verse I hear again, as if the world to turn had ceased. In Craigan's churchyard, all is peace. So why do uh, short videos? Una, I, I mean the hers in the back. And... Yeah, yeah. Well, firstly, the hers in the back of my neck were standing there. I'm, I'm, I'm listening. You give me 
a complete history of Craigan. And I have to be fair, I believe I've only stood in that graveyard once in my life. And I just, I felt like just jumping into the car and driving up to it now to look at it. You mean, you mentioned old history from the 1400s right through, and you mentioned about Cromwell, and you mentioned about the Great Hunger, and you mentioned about the landlords and the clergy and the whole lot. And of course, uh, Seamus Moore McMurphy, you'll tell us a little bit about him later. I, I believe a relation of your own right. tracing back through the, the annals of history. But my gosh, my gosh, you know, that we have a jewel here in the crown. And I, I have to say, I would be slightly disappointed that our council has not has not put that up there as a jewel in the crown. Because, I mean, when I hear what you're saying there, and when I listen to what you're talking about there, I'm going, my gosh, do the people know about this place? Well, I suppose Craven has, has started to tell a history. You know, it's over. just, it's... it's well, there is, it's, it's unique in that there is no other graveyard. I suppose Friars Bush in Belfast is the nearest, is the, is the other example. But there is no other graveyard that you will go to that you have that mix of people. Because when it was set up by the O'Neills, it was set up in the Roman Catholic faith, which was the faith of theirs. They set up the Church of Craigan. They set up their castle at Glass Drummond. It became Church of Ireland during the Reformation. And it is still a worshipping Church of Ireland church. There's service there every Sunday morning. But the entire fabric of people right in between all of that are there. People who fought in, in, in their own lives. Seamus Moore McMurphy's buried there. He was hanged in Armagh Jail in 1750. The man who captured him, John Johnson, High Sheriff of County Armagh, Johnson of the Fuse, is buried further down the graveyard. So, so the... the all of the people from that and all of the people who fought are all there together in the one space. And that's absolutely unique. Now, the start, the poetry that I started with, uh, The Fair Maiden, Urkel and Cregan, is the most famous of Art McCoy's poems. So you're linking the poetry with the visual. You're linking the entire story of Cregan. These two minute videos, if I say to you, will you come and listen to an hour of history, you'll say, oh, oh God, I don't know, no, that would be very bored. But you take two minutes of a snapshot like that, that you have the visual, that you have the river that's running beside it, that it's walking you up through the graveyard and it's telling you the story at the same time. Then, then you're on a winner with history. This is the way, this is the way we need to engage young people uh, in well, their own history. I'm, I'm I'm not so sure about it, but young people, I think we should be engaging everybody because when I look when I look at what you have done there and I see, could you tell me how old is in the graveyard? How old is the graveyard? Well, the graveyard's dating back from 1480. No, the, the church, church, the actual the church, church. The graveyard's dating from, from 1480. The Church of Ireland church that's there now was built in 1759. Uh, the bell tower beside it was added in 1799. So that's the Church of Ireland Church. Now, until there were enough of the Presbyterian community to worship at their own church, to build their own church, uh, they worshipped at Cregan and they're buried in Cregan. So you have from the three traditions, you have Church of Ireland, Presbyterian and Roman Catholic. And when there were enough of the, of the Presbyterian faith, uh, they built uh, between there and Cullihanna, they built their own meeting house. So there were for a time that Roman Catholics would have buried purely in a Roman Catholic graveyard, uh, but that changed again. My mum and dad are buried in Cregan graveyard. We always knew uh, that my father wanted to go back and be buried in Cregan uh, with the McMurphy grave from Clarnally. And that's where Seamus Moore is buried. And of course, when you mention Seamus Moore McMurphy, uh, another local legend, who was supposed to have a, a big, uh, I suppose, a big gathering there in April, but due to the coronavirus, it didn't happen. No, it didn't happen. This is the 300th anniversary of the birth of Seamus Moore. just tell us a little snippet. Seamus Moore was, was born in 1720, so this is the 300th anniversary of his birth. He was born in the townland of Kernally, where the McMurphys, the Murphys still live. 
Um, and he was a rapparee. Um, and I suppose for this area, one of the most uh, known rapparees for this South Armagh area. He, along with Heather O'Dornan, and O'Dornan was a Gaelic poet who's buried in Orney Graveyard just inside County Louth. Uh, the two of them had a poetry school uh, in Dunreavy over at Glass Drummond and uh, in Mullaban here where I now live. They also called in 1744 a meeting at the top of Sleeve Gullion in support of the Jacobite cause, in support of Bonnie Prince Charlie. McMurphy had fought at the Battle of Culloden in Scotland uh, and made it home from Culloden. The Battle of Culloden was 1744, made it back safely from Culloden only to be hanged, captured and hanged by Johnson of the Fuse in Armagh City in 1750. Hanged at the hanging gale there beside uh, the the palace stables, from the palace stables back to where McInerney's supermarket is. That was the Hanging Gale. And the Irish language group in uh, the Corlea group in Armagh have put a stone underneath the bridge there at, at McInerney's uh, to commemorate Seamus Moore. For any of the Armagh people that go to the, as they come down, down past McInerney's and then towards the other ground, just under the bridge, there's a stone sitting in the middle, in the there's middle some, of the yeah, hill there. That's and that's seen. the stone that commemorates yeah. Seamus That's right, because uh, he, and, and they intend to do, yeah. to put more stones. again. It's a great, it's a great story. But Una, you know, I, I, I could talk here for a week, and I, I wouldn't even be two footsteps up through Crag and Graveyard. I have to say, this is something, and and I'm, I'm going to be asking our local councillors. I'm going to be asked because we do talk to them here. I'm going to be asking them to get Crag and, and get it up there as the one of the number one destinations for tourism in South Armagh in this whole Newry Moorn Down area. And uh, we we we'll definitely push that one. I think you know it. It's a story that has to be put out there, and and it has to be told. Great, that's terrific. And I know you have another two videos, so maybe you could introduce the next video here. Uh, I think it's coming up. The th the next video is the mass rock, and then we're going for the market stone. But again, I suppose you know uh, the mass rock was very significant during the 1690s and COVID-19 done something that the penal laws of the 1690s couldn't do. It so maybe you can tell us a little bit about the mass rock. <laughs> yeah, the, this one is about, the next two videos um, have come about because I've been doing some online work with the children, COVID-19, they're not at school, uh, and the teachers have been doing online, doing their classes online. So on the Thursday uh, with St Mary's here in Mullaban, we've been looking at our local history. Uh, and the Mass Rock is one of the places here that was important to look at because the Mass Rock is part of their own story of the penal laws. Uh, and I also was able to tell them that when there was Catholic emancipation in 1829, the first cathedral to open in Ireland after Catholic emancipation was Newry Cathedral, St. Patrick's and St. Coleman's in Hill Street, Newry. Uh, and the architect on that, a Newry man, and I don't see much uh, up on him in Newry either, Thomas Duff was the architect on, on New York Cathedral. But the penal laws uh, forbade uh, the clergy to say mass. There was a, pr a price on the priest's head, and mass then was said in the mass rocks. So most, uh, most local areas would have had a mass rock. This is the last surviving mass rock in this area, and uh, we'll just watch the video. So we're going to watch the video first. We've lost sound. Okay. Don't, I'm not sure you know what's happened there, but you keep talking. You keep yeah, well, explaining it through there. So the penal laws forbid uh, the, the saying of mass. We'll just see this has come on. If it doesn't, I'll talk it.
This is Tariff Mashrock and the story of the penal laws. The intended effect of the penal laws was the dispossession of the landed Catholic population. In 1641, Catholics had owned 60% of the land in Ireland, and by 1776, land ownership in Ireland was only 5%. On the 1st of May 1689, the penal law said that all bishops, deans, Jesuits, monks, friars, and all clergy would leave the kingdom or suffer imprisonment and remain imprisonment until transported. If anyone was found harboring a clergy, he was fined £20 for his first offence, and by the third offence, he would forfeit all his lands during his life. The priest was a hunted man, and mass rocks became a feature of most town lands. The mass rock was placed where sentries could watch the area for soldiers, and the priest travelled in disguise. So the sentry stood where you now see the cross to watch, and the mass was actually celebrated below on the rock, which you can now see. A cross was erected in Cariff Mass Rock in 1942 by Father Corey uh, and by the local men Patrick McParland, Larry Hollywood and Peter McGill, who owned this farm. A yearly mass recommenced in 2001 and a new cross was dedicated at the Mass Rock on the 29th of June 2006. This is the last remaining Mass Rock in the parish of Fork Hill. Again, in a, a great story, and I think we have another video coming up about the market stone. Just a quick synopsis about the, what the market stone was. Well, the market is. stone is part of the story of the 1798 rebellion. So the market stone is about one mile directly underneath Elman Barracks, which is where the military were placed in Mullaban. And yet and all people could meet at the market stone. They pretended it was a linen market. There's a measure on, on, the, on the stone. For, for measuring cloths. Uh, so people were supposed to have been coming there to measure cloths uh, and undercover the United Irishmen were sworn in. We'll watch the video and we can talk a bit more about it then. The Market Stone. I stood beside the Market Stone, the year was 98, to meet a man from Sheila, whose name would carry weight. For we got word from Field that the time was drawing near when the bright pikes would glisten for the cause we held so dear. In the period leading up to the 1798 rebellion, the United Irishmen and defenders of Fork Hill and Mullaban often met at this large boulder at Quilly in the townland of Shanro. There is a rough yard measure chiselled on the side of the stone and local people brought woven linen from their homes to pretend that a sale was taking place to cover the swearing in of the United Men. This site was less than one mile from the military barracks at Belmont. Local tradition tells us that Jemmy Hope came from Antrim to administer the United Irish Oath. What have you got in your hand? A green bough. Where did it grow? In America. Where will it bud? In France. Where are you going to plant it? In the crown of Great Britain. We had caves up in Sleep Gullion. We had hideouts in Sleep Moor. Sleep back in Carrickna as in 41 before. Though the Scots horse were in at Belmont and Rodent's riders too, we forged good steel in Quilly beside the old Craig Dew. Now, where Craigan is a story. Again, in it. I'm sorry. There's a... Go ahead. Where Craigan is a story that is a much wider story. Those last two stories of the Mass Rock at Cariff and the Market Stone in Shanro are very local stories for this Mullaban school area. But it's an example of what you could do to do local history in each school area. Because it's very simply done. We went out with an iPad we filmed two minutes around the area. I mean, if you look at the market stone, look at the scenery that you could see as well as the market stone. 
So we just filmed two minutes of footage with the iPad. We came home, sat down and recorded a voiceover. And that it's as simple, it's as simple as that to do it. Um, so this could be done in all of the primary schools. You could put out snapshots, two minute quick snapshots of the historic things that are around their school and around the locality for them. Una, again, I'm sorry for the lag here, but you have definitely opened a, a lot of uh, questions for myself, for our councillors, for our council area. And I know maybe if Cahill could bounce in here, I'm sure Cahill has a, he has a sister living up beside you there. And uh, we are getting, we're getting some people in here talking about you. It's, uh, it's unbelievable the history that we have here and on our doorstep. And probably, we probably don't really appreciate it enough. But I, I can tell you, think from here in on the parish, the B, and uh, we need to be t the somebody. In this somebody, area. Uh, so and I, I have to say, it has been an absolute pleasure. Somebody wrote in there about Thomas Duff and said um, his headstone in our in, yeah in St Mary's. Uh, Thomas Duff also Glasfermon Chapel, which is a is a massively beautiful chapel in 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 a in a remote part of South Armagh. But Thomas Glasfermon Chapel is the reproduction of part of Ravensdale Castle. Ravensdale Castle was owned by the Fortescues. It was born in the Civil War in 1922, and the stones were in the hands of the Land Commission in the site. Uh, and when they went to build a church in the, in the late 1920s in Gastromont, uh, the PP had heard of, of the stones, and he had bought some of the stones. And the architect, when he saw the value of what he had, recreated part of Ravensdale Castle. If you type in Ravensdale Castle, you'll see what the old castle looked like, and there's Glastrum and Church right in the middle of it. He reproduced it, and the architect on Ravensdale Castle was also Thomas Duff. So Thomas Duff came from part of his stones and his building came back and is now the church. One quick thing before I go: the Fortescues were not known as good landlords, and they wouldn't allow their servants. Uh, from either religion, Catholic, Protestant, Presbyterian, they wouldn't give any of their servants time off uh, to go to Mass on a, or, or go to service on a Sunday. And the legend went, the folklore story went with it, uh, that an old man had put a curse on them uh, in three parts. Uh, and the first one was that the name would die out, which it did. The second one was that the songbird would never sing over the estate at Ravensdale Castle. And the third one was that mass would be said in their house. And in 1932, an architect from Dublin who knew absolutely nothing of that story, but just looked at the value of the stones that he had, recreated part of Ravensdale Castle as a church. Not brilliant. Una, Una, I have to say, I have thoroughly, absolutely, enjoyed your your talk here and from the reaction that we're getting from people uh, sending messages in we're going to have to do this again because i think all we're doing here we're just scraping the surface and and i i think we i particularly here in destination area we have a huge outreach and we have a huge following and i i think people will be crying out for more of this brilliant history of our area and i have to say uno welch it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you here this evening Absolutely. thank you very much Historical and cultural landscape of South Armagh, Craigan is our jewel. The following is a selection of verse and prose on Craigan, Urkill on Craigan. On the clay of Craigan churchyard, I slept all night in woe. With the rise of morn, a maiden came and kissed me, bending low. Her cheek had the blush of beauty, her tresses the golden sheen. Twas the world's delight to gaze upon the face of the fairy queen. One pledge I ask you only, one promise, O Queen Divine, and then I shall follow, still follow each step of thine. If I should die in some far-off land, 
and our wanderings east and west, in the fragrant clay of Cragen, let my weary heart of rest. Cragen pulls the centuries together and lets you see them in the nudity of their correlation. It is local history laid bare before you. It gives food for thought, and at no time of the day do whispers of the past become more vibrant than at the twilight hour. Cregan of the Princess, Cregan of the Irish Chieftains, Cregan of the Comwellian Landlords, Cregan of the Gael, Cregan of the Gaul, Cregan of the Poets, Cregan of the Outlaw, Cregan of the Priest Hunter, Cregan of 98, Cregan of the Famine, Cregan of the Land League, Cregan of the Clergy, Church of Ireland, Presbyterian and Roman Catholic, Cregan of the countless thousands of ordinary people. Sometimes at twilight here I stray, when summer sunset closes day. Across the meadow comes the strain, McCooey's verse I hear again, as if the world to turn had ceased. In Cregan's churchyard, all is peace. This is Cariff Mashrock and the story of the penal laws. The intended effect of the penal laws was the dispossession of the landed Catholic population.